I am Netmover Sitan. Welcome to the Middle Layer Law section. At least one question will be answered about the Separars by the end of this one. Certainly in this part of it. Raya, the world of creation in Kabbalah, the world of the angels, or Kosaya. The angels are dimly aware of their own existence as distinct from gods. This world is the abode of the permanent archangels. This is the middle layer, which contains the primary conscious divine emotions while the upper there contains the secondary conscious divine emotions. Within it are three departments, central command, welfare, and disciplinary. <sighs> central command is a department that provides an increased time limit for the Quiffoff meltdown alert by between 3 and 10 seconds, while it's working, depending on the amount of clerks still alive. Time is a valuable resource, as while it can be paused or sped up by the manager, the employees are chained to it. It also increases every ability by between 1 and 3 for those that work long enough within that department. The central command department represents the middle layer of the Lobotomy Corporation facility. The upper and lower part of the central command department takes the role of the foundation stone, which allows the facility to expand upward and downward. They also work as bridges that lead to the upper and lower layers. Projects undertaken by this department include the Physical Intervention Shield, that provides red damage protection. The Trauma Shield, that provides white damage protection. And the Erosion Shield, which provides black damage protection. <sighs> There's something missing, isn't there? There's a reason for this. The reason will come later. Just not yet. As there's the Sephirots of this department to go over. And by that I mean two of them. Which should stand out as the ones, the departments so far have only had one each. Well, there's a reason for that as well. I'd best get on with it, shouldn't I? Before you start screaming at the monitor, saying, Stop dithering and get on with it! Tipereth means beauty, representing the ideal balance between Jesed, mercy, and Gebura, justice. Tipereth also balances Nezhak and Hod in a similar manner. In that case, Hod can be seen as the intellect, while Nezhak is seen as emotion. It is also said to unite the upper nine Sephirots, where in the conflicting forces they are harmonized, and creation flowers forth. According to A, many children were abandoned in the outskirts, the end result of the many conflicts of the 
wings within the city. They died either due to disease, hunger, or the cleaners. The scariest of them all, as they ate children or accompanied them. It was a bad place for children to be. Think the worst parts of the Middle East crossed with the worst pandemic you can think of. With a hint of I am legend, and you'll get some idea as to what it's like in the outskirts. (sighs) Not somewhere where you'd want to spend longer than you have to. As for their background, the background of the ones known as Tipperef. Let's get to that. They are Enoch, a brown-haired boy in a blue hoodie and black pants, and Lisa, a light blonde girl in orange dress, white cuffs and collar, with a brown bow on the dress and the hair. A fixer found Enoch and Lisa. It's possible that this might be someone that will be spoken of later, but then again, she might not be. Regardless, she spent days agonizing over whether to report this or not. But when she reported her findings, Carmen asked for her to bring the children into the city from the outskirts. A complicated procedure, but no one complained. This is especially considering the measures that are likely to be taken to keep those in the outskirts out, such as walls, guards, and or automated security, that I mentioned in the intro to this law series. And those countermeasures are likely to be lethal. Mostly as a deterrent. But also, they can't break into the city and possibly spread disease if they're dead. Yeah, that is a city that shows no mercy to even potential threats. (sighs) Even the desperate... As for Enoch and Lisa, they didn't look like siblings, but they depended on one another much more than real siblings. Lisa was easily frightened and was closed off. Enoch was interested in the experiments that were happening in the Bosme Corporation. He had experienced so much despair and misfortune His eyes no longer look like those of a child's. It takes a quite specific set of conditions to go through that kind of ordeal without either committing suicide or going insane. Those two are stronger than most, one more so than the other. While Lisa didn't feel comfortable in the Bosme Corporation and wanted to leave, even though she couldn't, and even if she could. It's likely that their parents, biological or adoptive, are dead. Enoch was comfortable there and suggested that she pretends that Carmen is their new mother and hopes that Lisa changes her mind about her, seeing her as a good person. Yeah, Lisa wasn't so convinced... But it doesn't stop there. As they spent quite a bit of time living there, 
much safer than most children would be, both inside and outside of the city. <sighs> By comparison, it's a safe haven, isn't it? As they don't have to worry too much about psychotic cannibals being caught in crossfire or dying from more indiscriminate causes. Yeah, Enoch's attitude could probably be summed up with could be worse. Then again, Lisa was interested in the nest, which had a festival held every day where there's dancing. She can't go there as Carmen mostly keeps them locked up. Although thankfully Lisa is with Enoch, even though he can't promise to be with her forever. He has many doubts that he's been mulling over for some time. He can find some answers sometimes. Some of his thoughts can be absurd. So the answers might not exist or might vanish soon. He shed his skin, metaphorically speaking, in the process of searching for the answers. Maybe he can fly away and leave his heavy body behind. Lisa doesn't know what she's talking about in that regard, nor does she care. Nor does she care. She wants to go wherever he's going. A didn't think of them as family, or as those they had to take care of. Even so, he made it his job to bring them back home to ease Carmen's busy schedule. The children who survived the outskirts that they saved. Hmm. For a time, that was true. But long term... (sighs) I'm not so sure. Yes, the pattern with these stories is they don't end well. And guess what? This one will have no exception to that rule. Sadly. (sighs) Sometime later, Lisa asks why he keeps participating in strange experiments, even though they don't have to. That Carmen told them that they could take it easy there. Enoch knows that it'd be fun to spend time with her without any worries. He sometimes imagines a happy future like that, even though he doesn't find meaning in that life. They were once children abandoned in the outskirts, where children die every day. Enoch and Lisa were the lucky ones who could continue living. Living. That's one way of putting it. He doesn't see why living in comfort be a reason for existing. Lisa considers his words too hard for her and asks why he has so many thoughts in his mind that too much thinking can affect him negatively. One is able to cope with the harsh reality. The other would rather not think of that. These experiments are likely to be involving cogito, And we know how that ended with Giovanni. Non va affatto bene. (sighs) 
some time after that, Enoch says that he was always sad, that he never loved his own life for a second, and asks if it would be nice to live in a happy world next time. Lisa asks if it hurts. Enoch says that it doesn't, and that she shouldn't be sad, and that something good will happen next time. I understand his position. As what more can he go through that he hasn't already been through? Well, there might be a reason why he said those things. Carmen spent a lot of time thinking about his request to participate in these experiments before it was approved. And if you're thinking something bad is going to happen, you are completely right. It ended badly. Lisa cried at the loss of Enoch. She said that Carmen should have been the one to die. Carmen said the same thing about Lisa. The difference being that Lisa wasn't being serious. With her hateful mumbling. Carmen was. From that day, Carmen quietly expanded the wound, likely driving Lisa to suicide. This hints at a darker side to her personality, that she's not as good as Enoch believed her to be. Yeah, looks can be deceiving. (sighs) What isn't? Much later, they were turned into the forms that we're familiar with. The twin Sephira, Tipereth. One male and one female, each with the same hair colour and the same outfits. Though one is more irritable and the other is more laid back, they appear as children without any memory of their previous lives. If asked if they're twins... They say, of course they're twins, although not biological twins. The female Tipperef is worried about making mistakes repeatedly. The male Tipperef is helping her. And that soon she'll be fine by herself. The female Tipperef was able to make it with his help. She believed that she'd fall behind the others without him, although they agreed that they were good partners. Then the male Tipperef had an existential crisis. The female Tipperef was mentioning what they did. Then he said that he thinks about her and her about him. If she's worrying and in pain and existing, then there must be a reason. And Angela isn't happy, or is at least not satisfied if he's wandering about, as it would likely deviate from what she expects him to do and how she expects him to act. The female Tipperef, on the other hand, doesn't appear to be affected by this. She appears largely stable, all things considering. Speaking of the female Tipperef, She considers the upper Separas to be stupid. That they're only good at action as if they're busy. Although the male Tipperef doesn't see them as much different. She only cares about performance. Not caring about if the central department disappoints or encourages. 
the female tipper f sees the upper there as having it too easy. Let's see. We have the impatient, the disciplined, the compassionate, and the apathetic. And yet they haven't been scrapped, as they're acting in the way that they should be, being incapable of fulfilling the rules that they should be doing on paper. <sighs> Sorry, did I say rules? I meant roles. Yeah, I know. For someone who has a, as his first language English, he can barely speak it. The roles that they should be doing on paper aren't the roles they should be doing in reality. As they're supposed to fail at them. Not that she likes the middle layer that much either. Even though the male tip ref likes them. They're all cheerful and make him laugh. Seriously. Is he high? One is a broken, apathetic coffee addict, and the other is an aggressive former blood knight. That's cheerful to him? <sighs> anyway, the female tip ref told him not to laugh so easily. They have to be strict and stern. <sighs> Speak for yourself. He needs to derive what enjoyment he can from this, as there's so little to begin with. They had a bet over whether the manager could save an employee with 95% mental corruption. He bet yes, she bet no. The employee always died. She was initially happy about the victory, continuing the bet. But it eventually became boring. He always hoped for change. Then the first burnout, as far as the manager was concerned, occurred. The female Tibreth asks what will happen to him, to Angela. Angela recognises that his condition wasn't normal, and that his excessive questions will affect the manager that she'll have to reset him and bring him back to normal status. Back to day one. When the female tip ref complains about that, Angela says that she's acting like a child. <sighs> Angela, there's a good reason for that. It's because she is a child. <sighs> She dismisses this regardless. The female tip ref cried as she couldn't do anything about the male tip ref's condition. And there is a reason for his condition. Possibly due to his, well, creation. Well, the circumstances that resulted in it when he was human. Angela talks about the separars, how they look human, only when the perception filter is on. More convincing than Angela in behaviour. No AI is sophisticated enough to be considered human. Except for her, of course. And she's the only one. The reason for why the others are like what they are is... Well... Because... They're human brains in robot bodies! Yeah, explains a lot, doesn't it? Where it's likely that the original versions are kept in storage cloned and the memory copied onto the cloned brains. Each of them is different. But X 
the manager couldn't comprehend the appearance of them. He was puzzled. Those that burnt out get crushed messily by a crusher, the blood and the brain spilling out of the metal body. The cycle between activation, burning out, and crushing was getting shorter with the male Tiferef. And yet, the male Tiferef, each time the replacement, acted as if it was day one. Yeah, all these Sephiroth are human brains and robot bodies that wouldn't look out of place in the game Borderlands. Or indeed, any in that series, for that matter. And you're probably asking what this is leading to. Well, in this case, certainly. Oh yes, and the manager found this out by being in the storage room, where the perception filter doesn't work that well. After the first burnout, chronologically, it's revealed that Angela can't bring the original Tipref back, and decided to replace the original machine and transmits back the original memories. Not that it matters to Angela. The male Tipperef will smile at the female Tipperef and spend time with her, and warns her not to say careless words as it's meaningless in the facility. Anyone else thinking of Nedjak's words about how cruel the design of the facility is? A place that's as close to hell as possible without actually going there. As we know what happened to the company that tapped into that place for power. See the religious abnormalities law video for more on that. The same could also be said about... how cruel the design of Angela was. The male tip ref was getting worse by that point, and more unstable. Because they keep turning on the unstable machine. Multiple copies of the body, but there's only one soul. The female tip ref didn't believe that the soul was in there. She asked the manager for a favour, something that apparently X used to do for her. She wanted him to end the cycle and get rid of him, make him stay dead. Angela said that there was a reason for there being two of them there. There are two, but one. She believes that she can handle the central department by herself. She understood that Angela didn't care about them at all. That's one thing that she and, well, someone that will be covered later can agree on. The male Tiferef at this point was practically a moving piece of scrap metal. And there were (coughs) mel... Sorry. Thousands of them melted for storage. Angela wouldn't care. Like so many things, it was all a means to an end by this point. And any who would care, either dead, fled the facility unable to do anything, or... (sighs) Well, she believes the manager should be different. The irony. 
that the ones in charge of central command have a problem with issuing commands to others. Especially as the male Tipperef was apparently designed to burn out. Perhaps there's some kind of cruel joke by Carmen, even in death. When the female Tipperef has a meltdown, where she's around a pile of discarded male Tipperefs, during her meltdown, she removes all previous immunity against quip off meltdowns of the other departments. After quip off level four, the background music is replaced by organ music. <sighs> yeah, that's the only change. A change of music as the <sighs> nightmare of that day continues. And after Quip Off Level 7, the intensity of the music increases. I mean, where's the challenge in that? Well, that's not the challenge. The challenge is getting the energy quota and reaching Quip Off Level 10. And that's considering the ordeals that are dealt with during the day. Where it's unknown what will appear, but they will need to be dealt with if there is to be any chance of completing the day. I'll be covering the ordeals sometime before the lower layer is covered. As the worst of them appear as more departments are open. largely because there's more to deal with. And you might be asking, what does the Central Command Department get out of it? Well, after completing the day, Tipper F will reward the manager with permanent upgrades. The maximum amount of bullets available will be increased by 25%, along with the unlocking of the pale shield bullets. And that department will not be affected by the quip-off meltdown. After the female Tipperef regained her sanity, she thought that she could do it by herself. <sighs> And when the male Tipperef came back, she wanted to show him how mature she became. There's no end to the disappointment, and the male Tipperef didn't get any better. She couldn't stand the silence. She'd rather hide the disgust and guilt like it never existed when she saw that empty smile. <sighs> Yeah, ignoring a problem won't make it go away. It will just make it worse. <sighs> Seeing as her heart felt like it was tearing apart. She knew that he could never go back to the way he used to be. They could never return to the happy days they spent together. She was about to abandon him because it was hard for her to deal with. He suffered the most. Then the male tip ref appeared and asked if she was done. She was silent. He then said that too much time has passed. Let's go. The sun will set soon. Hurry, Lisa. 
as if he remembered who he was. And it's implied that she remembered as well, even if he doesn't remember his own previous name. Although she did. She questioned what he wanted from all this, even after sacrificing himself. What was he waiting for, even when he was being discarded? And that's what I want to know. (sighs) Well, if this is a cruel joke by Carmen, then... She did it to the wrong body. The female Tipper F doesn't know if it was all worth it or expected anything. Then she dropped her perception filter and said that she was counting on the manager now, wanting to believe that there was a reason for every sacrifice that was made and to know everything will be okay eventually. Of all the Sephiroth within the facility, <sighs> Tipperef are perhaps the most innocent of them all. Those that were brought in by Carmen through an intermediary. Only for one to die from the same experiment that killed Giovanni and the other, likely to have been driven to suicide. Yeah. (sighs) Doesn't make Carmen so sweet-sounding now, does she? Not that it matters in the long run, because... I suspect it tore her apart inside. Knowing what she did, and, well... It led to a painful end herself. Yeah, some people don't think about the consequences of their actions or how they affect others by it. And that's in our world. Never mind the world of a lobotomy corporation. They think about that even less. From two of the most innocent of the Sephiroth to one who is an unwilling pawn for another. That will be next. Until next time. Hail the rabbits! <laughs>